This is Zenless Zone Zero, and the creators of it hit me up so I can break down their combat system and pass on to you guys any useful information that I think would give you an advantage before playing it. I have some juicy stuff I figured out, but not everyone has heard of Zenless Zone Zero, so quick overview! First, it's an action RPG where you control one character at a time, but you can seamlessly swap and synergize with any of your three other characters you brought in. Example, you're in the middle of a combo, but you're about to get bopped. Call in another agent to block and deflect that incoming attack to chain into a longer combo string with them. Pretty satisfying mechanic, honestly. The second main focus is the overarching narrative that ties everything together, along with hanging out in between missions back in town. You'll be building out your squad here, taking on quests, and actually running an old school video store with a promoter of your choosing requests from customers to fill in a stock of movies that you curate. Also, there's this cool arcade in town with mini games to play and special events that go down that can pit you against other players. And the third main pillar of this is dungeon crawling through the hollow, which adds some roguelike elements into the mix that will enhance or challenge your team composition. There's also some light puzzles, secrets, and unexpected things that can happen here. So if this is already sounding like your kind of thing, use the link I have down below to pre-register to play Zenless Zone Zero when it launches on PC, console, and mobile. Now let's get into some of the deeper stuff. I'm Alex, and here we go. Alright, using a character's special attack, or when it's fully charged their EX special attack, has more to it than just pressing the button and watching the fancy maneuver play out. When you activate a special attack, you can actually press the switch characters button immediately at the start of the animation to quick swap over to someone else. This lets you momentarily have two or three of your characters out on the field at once, essentially creating your own custom team combo attack since you're lessening the time it takes in between actions. For example, I'm controlling Ambi, and I start the upward launch effect of her lightning bolt special, then immediately swap to someone else during its startup to then quickly catch the enemy now in an air juggle. Here, Nicole's EX special is a good one to activate, quick swap, and use its effect to pull enemies into a clump for someone else to smash on. However, some EX specials can be charged up beforehand by holding down the button, or will have follow-up attacks out of them, so that can alter how and when you use this trick. Next, before a mission, when you're picking your team composition, you'll notice a button on the bottom left to turn manual combos on or keep them defaulted off. Each will have their advantages and playstyle preferences. When you build up the gauge underneath an enemy's health bar, they will stagger, and you inflict 150% damage during this time, and this is also when team chain attacks will happen. By default, with manual combos off, you'll find the game regularly pauses on its own to ensure you activate chain attacks as soon as they're available. But if you don't like the idea of the gameplay frequently pausing on its own, or just want more direct control of when the chain attacks happen, you'll want manual combos turned on. Then, chain attacks will only initiate when you hold down the attack button during certain points of a combo, or if you just hold down the special attack button. Why is this good? Well, I'm glad you asked, human stuck on the other side of my screen. Here is Ben, but with manual combos kept off, a chain attack will automatically start after he parries with his EX special attack. With manual combos turned on, his EX special has a second attack out of it that you were missing out on, but now you're able to start a chain attack after that follow-up. Also, since you definitely want to take advantage of the 150% damage boost when the enemy is staggered, having manual combo set to on makes it easier to ensure you can squeeze in a character's strong ultimate ability before you start that sequence of team chain attacks. Next, a few upgrades I recommend you focus on towards the start. These little guys will sell you a limited amount of upgrade chips until the next store refresh. These just cost the in-game Denny coins, which you'll easily amass tons of, and I suggest buying every single one of the C-tier chips that they have here, or at least the types for the characters you have. 
You can use those to level up the basic attack, assist, special attack, and ultimate ability for your characters. That's an easy flat out increase to their damage and their overall potency. It's also important to get your character up to level 15 right away, because then you can unlock their core slot. This adds many new bonus effects to your character and new ways to synergize your party, which I'll touch back on in a few minutes. One of Ben's core skills, for example, gives him a temporary shield over his health bar after his EX special attack follow-up. This will become more potent at higher levels. To get a character over the level 10 bump though, you'll need a special material listed right here. Remember that icon that they need. Then use the VR device in the back room of the video store, no not that back room, the other one, to access this training program. Create a new custom battle template and look for the material icon that you need to upgrade your character and pick that enemy card. You can then fight that custom challenge setup, but beware, each attempt does expend your battery resource. Once you resoundingly stomp that enemy group, you'll net the materials you need to boost your characters past level 10. And then over at the remodeling shop, don't forget about these obnoxiously cute little support characters you can add onto your squad. If you go into the breakdown of their bonus effects, their overall level will dictate a buff given to your main characters increasing their total health, attack, and defense. It's more important to upgrade the level of these creatures than you might initially assume. You'll find them in battle running around causing havoc and boosting the power of your squad. Now here's a few quick tips for using the three characters everyone starts with, Billy, Nicole, and Ambi. Billy is generally focused on ranged multi-target attacks, which makes him your direct counter to large groups. His EX special attack pierces in a straight line, so try to move into a position where you can chain its effect through as many victims as possible. If you hold down the basic attack button, he'll enter a rapid fire shooting stance, and you can dodge from side to side in this. Billy pairs well with the Changing Tides W Engine effect that improves the damage the further away the character is to the target. If you need one of those, you can head over to the gadget shop and find a W engine that has that modifier on it. When playing as Nicole, she does more damage when her weapon has ammo in it. That ammo count is listed right here. You can hold down the attack button to do this range shot, which also reloads her weapon. Using her specials will also top off her ammo reserves. The quickest though is just to hold down the evade button, which initiates a reload after it concludes. I mentioned previously that you can charge her EX special, but another bonus is that you can deal extra damage directly in front of you while you charge this if you're right snug up on someone. When playing as Ambi, she has a stronger final hit of her basic combo by holding the fourth input or by delaying in between the third and fourth hit. Her special attacks come out faster as well if you activate them after the third hit of her basic combo string. These attacks, along with her perfect dodge attack, inflict electric damage, which is best used to counter mechanical enemies. Fire damage is best versus organic types, fleshy stuff, and ether damage is best used against ether enemies, the rocky looking dudes. That info should also dictate which agents you send in during a chain attack to exploit the targeted enemy's weakness. This game is all about creating synergies, like here with Soldier 11. One of her core abilities generates more special attack energy when she's paired with another fire agent. Ben is one of those, and he has a bonus to the burn status effect buildup when paired with a fire character as well. He can also apply his health over shield effect to other characters when another strike type character is in the party. You know who's fire and strike based? Coletta. And if you dig into her basic attack and ultimate ability descriptions, she'll get new tag team attacks when Ben is in the team. Here you can see this activate during her basic attack string when Ben runs in so she can bonk off his head and pile driver combo. Ben will also join in during her ultimate ability, changing the cutscene animation and improving its overall effect. 
So if you're rocking a specific team synergy like a fire based one right here, make sure to have the chef cook you a meal that gives bonus damage to the type you most commonly inflict. The drive discs that you equip to each character also have synergizing set bonus effects to consider. These are all music themed and just match the same genre type to get those extra set bonus effects. You can head over to the music store and use this cool mechanical lady to generate a random assortment of those drive discs. You can also press track settings to have her look for specific genres, which will increase the odds of getting more of that type. And finally, for being a persistent viewer in a short attention span existence, here are some bonus tips for you long timeliners. In the hollow, keep an eye out for these darkened spots, functioning kind of like hidden walls. That might reveal a hidden path, maybe some hidden loot, or ideally a whole bounty of hidden loot. In the roguelike style exploration areas, try to focus on obtaining cards of the same type. That can trigger a fusion, which provides a free bonus card each time. Every so often, dig into your storage and toggle over to the key items page. You might have some chests to open that you didn't know about or maybe you missed. If you need to know how to obtain certain items or materials, just select their icon. That will show you exactly where you can obtain them. No wiki required. Over in the arcade, you can play a few games here, like Snake or Soul Hounds 3. The arcade has achievements of its own for playing these, and that can net you some of the precious film resource. You're gonna need that. Alright, that's it for now, but let me know down in the comments what you think of Zenless Zone Zero, or if you want more coverage of it. I'm listening, I actually want to know. Also, if you have any direct questions for me, hit me up over on Twitter at BoomstickAlex. Overall, I think the combat mechanics they created for this are solid, being easy to pick up and play while leaving that extra layer of depth for the hardcore players to dig into. I'm also really enjoying its style, being modern anime themed mixed with old school 80s and 90s stuff like the video store, CRT monitors, and retro effects. Now a big thanks to Zenless Zone Zero for hooking me up with this early build of the game and for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to use that link down in the description or in my pinned comment to pre-register to play Zenless Zone Zero on PC, console, or mobile. As always, I'm Alex, thanks for checking this out today, and I'll see you next time.